Today, we're going to read a story called City's Secrets by Naomi Shihab Nye. My grandmother lives on the other side of the earth. When I have daylight, she has night. When our sky grows dark, the sun is peeking through her window and brushing the bright lemons on her lemon tree. I think about this when I'm going to sleep. Your turn, I say. So this character is Mona, and she's actually telling a story about her grandmother, whose name is Siti. Between us are many miles of land and water. Between us are fish and cities and buses and fields. And presidents and clotheslines and trucks and stop signs and signs that say do not enter and grocery stores, and benches, and families, and deserts, and a million trees. Once I went to visit my grandmother. My grandmother and I do not speak the same language. We talked through my father as if he were a telephone, because he spoke both our languages and could translate what we said. I called her Siti, which means grandma in Arabic. She called me Habibi, which means darling. Her voice danced as high as the whistles of birds. Her voice giggled and whooshed like wind going around corners. She had a thousand rivers in her voice. A few curls of dark hair peeked out of her scarf on one side, and a white curl peeked out on the other side. I wanted her to take off the scarf so I could see if her hair was striped. Do you notice? Look at this picture. And look at CT, the grandmother. Do you see the words next to her mouth? That is actually a word in Arabic, which is the language that CT speaks. Soon, we had invented our own language together. Sinti pointed at my stomach to ask if I was hungry. I pointed to the door to ask if she wanted to go outside. We walked to the fields to watch men picking lentils. We admired the sky with hums and claps. We crossed the road to buy milk from a family that kept one spotted cow. I called the cow Habibi, and it winked at me. We thanked the cow with whistles and clicks for the fresh milk that we carried home in Siti's little teapot. Every day, I played with my cousins, Fauzi, Sammy, Hani, and Hendia from next door. We played marbles together in their courtyard. Their marbles were blue and green and spun through the dust like planets. We didn't need words to play marbles. This is a cool picture. Do you guys see in this picture where there are planets? And do you see where there are marbles? My grandmother lives on the other side of the earth. She eats cucumbers for breakfast with yogurt and bread. She bakes the big flat bread in a round old oven next to her house. A fire burns in the middle. She pats the dough between her hands and presses it out to bake on a flat black rock in the center of the oven. My father says she has been baking that bread for a hundred years. This oven is a very, very old kind of oven. It's been used for a very long time. It's a brick oven. Have any of you guys ever seen a brick oven before? Sometimes they use them to make pizza or certain restaurants will have them.
My grandmother and I sat under her lemon tree in the afternoons, drinking lemonade with mint in it. She liked me to pick bunches of mint for her. She liked to press her nose into the mint and sniff. Some days, we stuffed little zucchini squash with rice for dinner. We sang Habibi, Habibi, as we stacked them in a pan. We cracked almonds and ate apricots called Meeb, Meeb, while we worked. One day, Sidi took off her scarf and shook out her hair. She washed her hair in a tub right there under the sun. Her hair surprised me by being very long, and it was striped. She said it got that way all by itself. I helped her brush it out while it dried. She braided it and pinned the braid up before putting on the scarf again. In the evening, climbed up the stairs to the roof of City's house to look at the sky and smell the air and take down the laundry. My grandmother likes to unpin the laundry in the evening so she can watch the women of the village walking back from the spring with jugs of water on their heads. She used to do that too. My father says the women don't really need to get water from the spring anymore, but they like to. It is something from the old days they don't want to forget. You guys see the women carrying the jugs on top of their head? That looks tricky. I don't know if I could do that. On the day my father and I had to leave, everyone cried and cried. Even my father kept blowing his nose and walking outside. I cried hard when Siti held my head against her shoulder. My cousins gave me a sack of almonds to eat on the plane. Siti gave me a small purse she had made. She had stitched a picture of her lemon tree onto the purse with shiny thread. She popped the almonds into my purse and pulled the drawstrings tight. Our plane flew to the other side of the world. I remember the tattoos on my grandmother's hands. They look like birds flying away. My father says she has had those tattoos for a hundred years. I think about CT's old green trunk in the corner of her room. It has a padlock on it. She wears the key on a green ribbon around her neck. She keeps my grandfather's rings in there and her gold thread and needles and pieces of folded up blue velvet from old dresses, and two small leather books, and a picture of my father before he came to the United States, and a picture of my parents on their wedding day, and a picture of me when I was a baby, smiling and very fat. Did I really look like that? Well, pay attention to that list of things that CT has in her trunk. Do they have anything in common? Why do you think she's keeping them all there? I see grandfather's rings, old photographs, pieces of an old dress. I wonder what those things all have in common. What do you think? When I got home, I wrote a letter to the President of the United States. Dear Mr. President, my grandmother on the other side of the world has a lemon tree that whispers secrets. She talks to it and gives it water from her own drinking glass. She guesses the branch where lemons will grow next. All the old men and women of her village take good care of their trees. Some have fig trees with shiny leaves. Some have almond trees covered with white blossoms that fall down on the road like snow. Last night, when I watched the news on TV, I felt worried. If the people of the United States could meet Siti, they'd like her for sure. You'd like her too. My grandmother can read the stars and the moon and the clouds. She can read dreams and tea leaves in the bottom of a cup. She even said 
she could read good luck on my forehead. Mr. President, I wish you my good luck in your very hard job. I vote for peace. My grandmother votes with me. Sincerely, Mona. So this little girl, Mona, she's writing a letter to the president. And something you should know is that Mona's grandmother, Siti, she lives in a country called Palestine. And Palestine has had a lot of conflict, a lot of violent conflict for a long time. So Mona is writing this letter because she wants the United States to help bring peace where her grandmother lives. Sometimes I think the world is a huge body tumbling in space, all curled up like a child sleeping. People are far apart, but connected. My grandmother lives on the other side of the earth. While I am dreaming, she rises from her fluffy bed and steps out her door to check the lemons growing on her tree. The first thing she does every day is say good morning to her lemons. All day the leafy shadow of her tree will grow and change on her courtyard wall. She will move with its shade when she sleeps. She will dream of me. Okay, that's it for the book. Thanks, guys. Thanks for reading with me.